wrestle in this place and we know it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a year of great joy and laughter. And that's what Father God told me this year. We're going to see increase. We're going to see divine alignment and divine intervention. We're going to see miracle signs and wonders. We're going to see the goodness of the Lord as never before. And we, we're also going to see the wealth of the wicked coming to the righteous in Jesus' name. God said that to me as well. So we're going to expect a wonderful new year ahead of us. And we can go full with faith and certainty that God is for us and He's not against us and that no weapon formed against any of us will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to read Jeremiah 31, uh, 31 from uh, verse 12. It says, they will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the grain, the new wine and the oil, the young flocks of the herds. They will be like a well-watered garden. They will sorrow no more. Their maidens will dance and be glad, young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the priests with abundance, and my people will be filled with my bounty, declares the Lord. And that's what Father God's telling us this year. Even though there will be trials and tribulation, but those that are focused on the Lord, He'll bring every single one of us through whatever we're going through, and it will be quicker than before. There will, not, there will be struggles, but He will help us out quicker than we've ever been in a struggle before in Jesus' mighty name. So, Father God, we bring, uh, we bring the service before you, Father God. Uh, we know, Father God, this, this year is a, the, the year of miracle signs and wonders, creative miracles, divine alignment and divine intervention. Father God, we ask your Holy Spirit to have full, full control over the service today, Father. Yes. And we just thank you, Lord God, that the precious people, family, friends and relatives, Father God, and those that are listening to us, Father, will feel the love of the Holy Spirit. In their, wherever they are, Father, they'll feel your love reaching out to every single one. Father God, you don't want one, anyone to suffer, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you will heal and set them free, yes, Father God, that you'll give them a hope Amen. for the future. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name. And Amen. Satan, you will not lie to the people of God in any way, form, or shape. In Jesus' name, your works are brought to naught by the blood of Jesus. No weapon formed against God's people will prosper in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We invite your Holy Spirit to have full control this morning to attend and minister to every life in this place and those listening. In Jesus' mighty name, we bring Pastor Bob before you. We thank you, Father God, that he will preach the oracles of God. Father God, we thank you for signs and wonders, Father. We thank you for the gift of the healing, gift of healings and the gift of the discerning of the spirits. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. So we're going to give God all glory and honor that's due to him. We're going to give him of our very, very best praise, honor, and worship in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
that and I had a confirmation that this was from the Lord yesterday I think we read something somewhere and she said you're on the right track in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord I just want to remind you that you can feel free anytime during the service to come up and if you've got a gift you want to leave at the altar just come and leave it at the altar in Jesus' name, you want to get out of debt, you want to be blessed financially, give it to God's kingdom. Let's turn to James chapter 1, hallelujah. And uh, the title of my message today is Press In, Press In, I suppose, in the year 2022. In Jesus' name, I just felt the Lord say, the Lord is, I heard about, a, I think Lee shared with me this morning about a prophet she's heard of that's, prophesying words from the Lord. I like to know the names of the prophets before I can stand in agreement with them, but and this guy is prophesying that the Lord is, wants to bring holiness back into his church, that the church is moved from holiness, there's a bit of disrespect crept into the church, and you know, we were, I was brought up in the Methodist church, and uh, when I met Lee, she was a Catholic, and I had to become a Catholic to marry her. And so we became Catholics, and, uh, and then we got born again, and then the Catholic Church excommunicated us. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, the one thing always stood out for me in the Catholic Church, we used to come into the church, walk up to the end of the pew, bow down, cross ourselves, and then go and take our seats in the pew, but there was always this holy silence. Reverence, that's the word. There was always this reverence in Jesus' name. And I think that's what God wants back in his church. Sometimes I think it feels like we've got more into a party mode, in a concert mode, and some churches have become entertainment centers for the young people, and... Uh, and I'm not saying there's anything against it. If it's bringing people to the Lord and they're getting saved, praise God for that. But I do believe God wants to bring back a little bit of respect and holiness to his church. Amen. The church is a holy place. It's a place, holiness means sanctification. So it's a place of sanctification. It's a place of separation. It's a place where we can gather together, separated from the world, and we can lift up holy hands, and we can worship, and we can praise our Lord, hallelujah, and God wants us to press in this year and not to give up. That's right. I've learned over the years that the devil's ploy and the, what the devil tries to do, he, he keeps chipping away at us with problems and situations and, and, and the influence of the world on our, on our lives and uh, sometimes the going can get tough. Jesus said in this world you will have tribulation. So he's telling us, he's warning us, we will have tribulation. He said, but behold, I have overcome the world. And God says, and Jesus also told us, before I go to what God said, Jesus also told us, he that endures to the end will be saved. There's an endurance. There's a fighting the good fight of faith. And God is saying to us today, pressing. The Apostle Paul said, I press in towards a goal, towards a finish line. And that's what God is calling us to do this year. We need to start off as we mean to carry on. Tomorrow, the day after, me and myself are going into a season of prayer and fasting. And, uh, and um, I would encourage you to also do it if you're able to, if you're medically fit enough to do it and to press in and uh, to seek God and to get a vision for the year as well. If you haven't already got one, the world, they're making their New Year's resolutions, which they will break one by one. <laughs> and, uh, and we need to keep our vision as well in Jesus' name. The vision of this church is that this church will be a light shining in the darkness. Amen. It will be a place of safety and sanctity. And God confirmed that on Christmas Day for those of you that were here with that guy, Tertius, I think he was called, who came into the church into a, a distressed state, having just been robbed and, and burgled at his home and his wife assaulted and 
all the rest of it. The good news is that they're fine. In Jesus' name, the community, after we posted on the local WhatsApp group, the community rallied around with food for them and uh, cell phone and other things. And, um, and we haven't heard much more since, so I, I assume everything is going well there. But in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, it says there, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So God wants us to be perfect in Jesus, of course. Jesus said, don't call me perfect. There's only one perfect one. And that's my Father. So it's in God that we seem to be perfect in His eyes. And we only live to please God, not to please man, but to please God in Jesus' name. So we want to be perfect in His eyes. Uh, I watched, I didn't watch it all, but uh, I, I was watching bits and pieces of the, the funeral of uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And uh, um, the one thing that apparently he said one day, there's a a photograph of him that's um, quite popular overseas and it's a picture of him with some other guy and uh, it was in Cape Town in his earlier years and uh, they were going on a, a march that had been deemed illegal and the army and the police were there trying to stop the march and Desmond Tutu stood in front of them with a defiant look on his face and held up his Bible mm -hmm. and he said, I'm not here to break the law, I'm here to obey God. Now, whether you agreed with his politics, with his way of thinking and what he said or not, the fact remains that for all of us, as children and family of God, we're here not to break the law, but to be obedient Amen. to God Amen. in Jesus' name. And that's what God wants. And I've often uh, wondered when I've read this verse, I'm looking at it now again, and he said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Well, Jesus told us we would have trials, tests, and tribulations. And the Apostle Paul says that there's no test or trial or tribulation that God would allow to come upon you that you weren't able to handle. And with it, he will give you a way of, es of escape. You'll find that in Corinthians. But in verse 3... It says here, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And I have to wonder, does God really need to test our faith? Surely God already knows where we are in our faith. He's already given us faith as small as a mustard seed. And we feed that faith on the word of God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so that faith grows and we all grow and we all have different levels of faith. And there's times even when our Faith is, uh, uh, when we, we think we're quite strong in the faith, there are times when our faith comes under attack and perhaps we're a little bit weak in our faith. And we shouldn't be ashamed of that. Then what we need to do is get around other people that are strong in their faith. That can encourage us to lift us in our faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You must remember, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, Satan has asked for you to sift you, to test your faith. But here I think God is talking, knowing that the taste, testing of your faith produces patience. I think sometimes our faith gets tested so that we can see where we are in our faith life, in our faith walk. And it produces patience. Let me tell you the ingredients of faith, before I go any further, the ingredients of faith are hope, love, and patience. We have to learn to be patient sometime. Up here we've got a picture of a wine press. I don't know how well you can see it. The lighting is not that great in here. But it's a wine press. And if it was a full picture, here you can see the wine press itself. And here I see the wine coming out from the crushing of the grapes into a receptacle there. And uh, if you could see inside, there will be different methods. I don't know what method that press has got. 
of, of pressing. Someone's got a screw, a screw thing with a, a plate there and they screw, they screw it up and it crushes, pushes down and crushes the grapes. Uh, another one, people hold these flat things and they bang down and pulverize the grapes to crush them. And uh, if, you, if you can't afford that, they used to stand in it and crush it with their feet <laughs> and, and, and uh, bring the, the wine from the, the gra or the grape juice out and they would make wine with it. But you can't drink this wine unless a grape has been crushed. And you cannot drink the wine unless you've been crushed. And you see, sometimes God crushes us. He crushes us. You know, read Job. Satan went before God. And God allowed him, gave him permission to go and test him. But he said, don't touch his life. And sometimes we get attacked by the devil. And that's when we need our faith. And that's when our faith gets tested. But unless we've been growing in God and we've been patient and we've allowed his crushing in our lives, how can we drink of the wine which represents the power of God in Jesus' name? You know, when they make wine, they, they, they get the grape juice or whatever juice they're going to use and they mix it with water and they put in some yeast and all the rest of it and it ferments. And then that wine has this different effect on you when you taste it. It's become fermented. If you taste grape juice, unfermented wine, it tastes nice. But it doesn't really have an effect that you know you've drunk it. But if you drink fermented stuff, my goodness, you're going to know that you drank it. I remember just as a bit of a joke, I don't think anybody in the family will probably hear this overseas, but let me tell you this. When I was a policeman, and please remember it was before I was born again, I had a hobby at home of making wine, homemade wine. I made coffee wine, I made peach wine, I made all sorts of wine. I had a little cabinet in the garage with a tropical fish tank thermometer there and a coloured light and everything was perfect and I used to make this wine and people used to like drinking it and I could make it at various strengths. And then this guy that I knew that sometimes was a bit of an irritation to me, he came cycling several miles to come and visit me one day and he asked me if he could have a grape, <laughs> if he could have a glass of my wine and I went out and I deliberately poured him the strongest wine that I had made. <laughs> and then watched him get on his bicycle and wave goodbye to him, <laughs> which was rather naughty. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this is how it is with God. We need to be crushed sometimes. But you know, you know when you've been crushed because God is with you. God loves you so much. And God loves you so much that when you're getting crushed or you're going through a test, a trial, or a tribulation, make no mistake. He's walking with you through it. Jesus told the disciples, let's get into the boat and go to the other side. And as they went across the lake, the storm arose. And it was a great storm. And he was fast asleep in the back of the boat. And the devils, uh, the, the, uh, the devils, the disciples were panicking. And they woke him up, Master, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? And the first words that came out of Jesus' mouth was, Oh, you of little faith, how much longer do I have to put up with you? And he didn't mean it in a nasty way. He meant, how long is it going to take for you to grow in faith? You've been walking with me all these years. You've been watching the miracles. You've seen me raise people from the dead. And now there's a storm and I've given you all authority. And you're panicking. And he stood up and he pointed at the storm and he said, Peace, be still. And the storm became peaceful. In Jesus' name. He's always with us. But we need to keep on wrestling against these things. Fighting against these things. Standing in faith. And reaching out to God like the woman with the issue of blood. Reaching out to touch the robe of Jesus. If only I can touch the hem of his cloak, I will be healed, she said. 
and she crawled through the crowds and she touched the hem of his garment and he said who's touched me and the disciples said are you crazy all these people around us pushing us around and you say who's touched me but Jesus he felt power that went out of him the Bible calls it virtue went out of him virtue means truthfulness truthful power that went out of him and she was healed in Jesus' name. In Genesis chapter 32, if you care to turn there, Genesis chapter 32 and verse 22, this is talking about Jacob. And it says in verse 22 of Genesis 32, and he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford at Jabok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he, that's the man, saw that he did not prevail against him, against Jacob, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. The dummy will tell you what that's like, because our, our kneecap was dislocated twice already. And uh, there's a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort. And, and, and uh, they had to give her oxygen. They had to knock her out where they put it back into place and do all those things. And it's a pain, painful thing. But Jacob kept on wrestling with him with his hip out of socket. And the man said, the man said, not Jacob, the man said to Jacob, let me go because the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So the man, as we know, it's the Lord. So the man said to Jacob, what is your name? And Jacob said, Jacob. And the man said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with me, and you have prevailed. The name, the one aspect of the meaning of the name of Israel is to struggle with God. Uh, there's other meanings as well for that name of Israel. But you think about it and how Israel over the years has been blessed. It's a blessed land. It's a wonderful place if you get the opportunity to go there. I said to Lee the other day, I would love to go there. But it's a, a beautiful place. It's a, a place, it, 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 there's desert all around it. And then there's this oasis where it produces the best fruit, some of the best fruit that, that's exported to different countries in the world comes from Israel. But there's always been this atmosphere against Israel over the years. And you can see how Israel has struggled spiritually with God. But the thing that I'm trying to bring out here is that Jacob's persistence. He said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men, and you have prevailed. You have withstood, you kept on going, you pressed in, you didn't stop. And that's what God is requiring of us and sometimes we wrestle with God Lord why don't you bless me <laughs> Lord where's my healing Lord where's my deliverance and we don't understand but God is saying prevail keep on going stand in faith and don't give up the devil wants you to give up because God has got an army marching through this land he's got an army marching through this world and the devil wants to break that army down. And what we need to do is we need to stand in faith. Knowing that if God is for us, who can be against us in Jesus' name? What we need to do is we need to keep on keeping on and not give up at all. Never to give up. Don't give up. 
Don't give up. Successful person never gives up. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If we turn to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. We read there where the Apostle Paul, he says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight, fight of faith. We need to keep on fighting this good fight of faith. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 13, I told you uh, a few minutes ago that this is where Jesus said to them that the, he who endures to the end will succeed. There is an enduring endurance to the end, but we have to do our part. It's no good coming and praying and believing God. Pastor, please pray with me. I believe in God for healing or I believe in God for that. And you pray with a person and then the next, the next couple of weeks, you, uh, after a couple of weeks you see them and you bump into them and you ask them what's happening, what's what. what you know what's happened about our prayer time together? And that person says, oh no, it never happened. I saw the next day that the prayer wasn't answered. You see, we get impatient. We want everything today. And yet sometimes I can tell you, we've been doing this for 40 years. We've been born again. And I can tell you now, sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it can happen instantly. But all I know is that God's timing is perfect. His timing is always perfect. And we have to learn to trust Him and trust His timing as well. In Jesus' name. And that's not always easy, is it? In the name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12. This is for this year. Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 2 to 3 says this. Looking unto Jesus. Well, let's read from verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now before I go any further, as we grow as Christians, as you are growing in Christians, you must permit, you must allow, you must open yourself to the Holy Spirit. When God came looking for Adam and Eve. Adam. Where are you? Yeah. And Adam had hidden away. Because he'd become aware of sin. And they covered themselves with fig leaves. Because they lost their innocence. They realized they were naked. And every Christian. Me included. And you included. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. That when we know that we've sinned, when we get a realization of sin in our lives, we deal with it. We deal with it. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, to convict us of sin. And sometimes we don't. We think, nobody's looking. It's fine. But God is always watching. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He sent His Spirit to convict us, to help us to grow. In Jesus' name. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, the completer of our faith. The author, the one who made it possible for us to have faith. The one who told us, if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we will speak to the mountain and that mountain of debt, that mountain of sickness, that mountain of unhappiness, and you tell it to be thrown into the sea and it will be thrown into the sea. And he went on to say, and whatever you ask for, when you ask, if you believe you have it and you have no doubt in your heart, you will receive that for which you've asked. He's the author. And he's the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross so that we could live by faith, so we can walk in the dispensation of grace. Before him endured the cross, despising the shame, lying on a stand, being nailed to a cross naked, 
and been spat on and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we need to keep our eyes on the author and the finisher of our faith. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Keep your eyes on him. He's the only true God. He's the only living God. You see, Jesus came to give you a better life. Jesus came to give you and me a better life. There's lots of scriptures in here that give us different reasons in the Bible. That give us different reasons why Jesus came. He came to undo the works of the wicked one. Amen. He came to set the captive free. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, it says there, Jesus is speaking. He says, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus is telling us he came to save that which was lost. And let me tell you, without Jesus, we were lost. I was lost. Amen. I was on my way to hell. Amen. I would have wound up in the burning flames of hell. Preachers don't want to preach it anymore because they're frightened of the effect it might have on their congregations. But I'm sorry. Jesus spoke about hell in Jesus' name. He spoke about the fact that God created hell for the devil and his demons. God doesn't send us to hell. We send ourselves to hell by making the wrong choices. And we always have to face the consequences of our choices. And in John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus said, The thief, the devil, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life. And that they may, may have it more abundantly. More abundantly. Abundantly, That's Jesus' plan. Well, God's plan. And Jesus is a major part of that plan in Jesus' name. I want to read to you a scripture. If you go, go in your Bibles to Psalms, after Psalms, you'll get um, Proverbs. And then after Proverbs, you'll get Songs of Songs or Songs of Solomon. And then you get Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, sorry, Ecclesiastes yeah. comes before Songs of Solomon. It does. Yes. So it's right after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. We don't read this scripture very often. I want to tell you, there's a scripture here. And Ecclesiastes, I'm just reminded of it. But I don't know if I'll be able to find it quickly. I thought it was in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Let me just see quickly. Yes, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8, it says, He who digs a pit will fall into it. And whoever breaks through a wall will be spitten by a serpent. You know, every day, me and myself, at 6.30, we gather together for our prayer time, and we pray for everybody that comes to our church by name. We apply that in our families, and we apply the blood of Jesus and we thank the Lord that the blood of Jesus places a wall or a hedge of protection around them. But that's as far as we can go. Because it says here, whoever breaks down that wall, a serpent will bite him. So the rest is up to you. In Jesus' name. But let's go back over the page to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. I want to read to you verse 11. This is wisdom. This is great wisdom. In our, in our life in Christ Jesus. When we want the things that are promised us. And all God's promises are yes and amen. They're precious promises. But listen to what it says. I should have bought my NIV or Living Bible to make it easier. But it says the race is not to the swift. Nor the battle to the strong. Nor bread to the wise. 
nor riches to men of understanding, nor favour to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. For man also does not know his time, like a fish taken in a cruel net, like birds caught in a snare. So the sons and daughters, and when he says sons, like that means mankind. So the sons and daughters of men are snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. Let's have a look at this again. It says, the race is not to the swift. What's he speaking about? You know, we live in a day and an age where out there is a rat race. There's a rat race going on out there. But the rat race out there is for those who are hungry for power. I come out of a corporate world, I left the police force, I came to South Africa as a tradesman, and then they put me into the offices, into administration and accountancy, and I worked my way up through that. And I can tell you now, I saw people that would do anything to climb over somebody else, to step on his head and crush him in order to get promotion. Yeah. And it's called the rat race. Mm. But the Bible says the race is not to the swift. In other words, those who have trust and faith in God move speedily along if they wait patiently on the Lord. They won't be involved in any rat race. Nor the battle to the strong. People who are strong in faith, people who are strong in character, people who are strong in doing things the right way, handling their lives in the right manner, they don't fight a battle. They don't fight a battle. The battle is not for the strong. The battle is for the weak. The weak in character. The weak in faith. The weak in desires. No bread to the wise. When the Bible speaks about bread, it's speaking primarily about money. Wise people don't need money. Wise people control their money. Their money does not control them. They're wise with their money. They don't use their money for self-glorification. They use their money wisely for God's kingdom. No riches to men of understanding. A person who understands economics. A person who understands God's econ economy. God's economics. That person. He's not chasing riches. Because blessings follow him wherever he goes. And favor. The Bible says if you're a believer, if you're in relationship with God, you will find favor even with your enemies. Even with your enemies. If I'm going into a meeting with somebody that's ungodly, even with godly people sometimes, before I go in, I spend time praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit and seeking the Lord before I go into a meeting. But one thing I always pray is I thank the Lord that I will find favor with everybody there, including enemies if they're there. But the thing is this, that whoever you are, whether you are wise, whether you are not in the rat race, whether you are clever with your finances, Whatever it is, whether you find favor with everybody, one thing is true, and it tells us here at the end of verse 11. But time and chance happens to them all. For a man does not know his time. We don't know when our time will be. We, do not know, we don't know at all when our time will be. I read a thing uh, yesterday evening during the night on, on Facebook, and it, I don't know if you've ever heard of this uh, singer called Jonathan Butler. Well, we're linked on Facebook, and uh, there's another well-known musician, I don't think you would know him, he's an American musician, and Jonathan lives in America now, and does most of his singing in America, but he came back because he ministered uh, at um, Desmond Tutu's funeral, and... Uh, and he put there, this guy died suddenly yesterday. And there was one comment there, and this lady, she put there, oh my gosh, I was only talking to him three hours ago. Man does not know his time. And Jesus said to the rich young ruler, you fool, tonight your soul will be required of you. 
we can't understand, we don't know when God is going to take us from the here, from this physical earth, into a spiritual eternity with him. Fish. It says like fish taken in a cruel net. Fish swimming around. I used to do fishing with my dad. And you see fish swimming around. The next minute it is, he sees a worm, he grabs it, but there's a hook there. And he's caught. Or maybe he swims into a net. And it says, like a fish taken in a cruel net. Like a bird caught in a snare. So the sons of men are snared in an evil time. We've got to watch we're not trapped. You've got to watch the devil is like a roaring lion roaming around seeking who he may desire. But we're promised and we're told if we submit to God and we resist the devil, he will flee from us because we are powerful, more powerful than the devil. We're told, the Apostle John tells us in one of his epistles, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. In Jesus' name. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 says here, it's not by, this is the Lord speaking, it's not by my might, nor by, sorry, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Let me rephrase that. It's not by my might or your might. It's not by my power or your power, but it's by his spirit. Hallelujah, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, who learned to be abased, who learned to live in wealth, who, who was stoned, hallelujah, who was locked up in jail, who was tortured, and he said, I've learned to live all these different ways of life, but I've learned to be content in whatever situation I find myself in. The secret to moving on into the next level of God is to learn to be content where you are. Learn to be content where you are. Learn to trust the Lord, Learn to love the Lord. Learn to walk in faith with the Lord. Learn to be content where you are. Be grateful. Be thankful to the Lord. We're not grateful enough. We're not thankful enough. Be thankful to the Lord. Show Him gratitude in Jesus' name. And walk that way. And then the next thing is, we will get promoted. And promotion comes from the Lord in Jesus' name. Why isn't this thing working? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's, uh, that's Jacob wrestling with the Lord. I thought this thing was working all the time. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And here we are. It's not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And then this great apostle Paul, he says... And Philippians chapter 4, uh, and Philippians, sorry, chapter 3, and verse 14. Now listen to what he said. He, he, I want to tell you, you think you've been going through a tough time. The Bible says there's no problem that is common to man that God will not allow to come upon you that you can't endure it, and with it he will give you a way of escape. Now I think I quoted to you, spoke to you about it just now in Corinthians. And here... The Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14, I press towards a goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That's your price. The Bible says when you leave this earth, you leave this earth as a believer and you will receive a crown of glory. You will receive a crown of eternal life. And the Apostle Paul says, I press towards a goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you this morning, you have no reason to give up. You have no reason to give up. But you have every reason to press in and to keep on going as you run towards the finish line in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I remember, I remember the one time, I'm just reminded of this. 
My other son, Mark, who's not here today, and he used to go to a boarding school in a town called Trenton. 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 Sorry, Trent. Where are you? <laughs> Trenton. He got, we got a bursary for him down there. And he went to this, and I went down there one day for the sports events. My mother, mum and dad, before they went to heaven, they were out here visiting us in South Africa on holiday. And uh, I went with them down there and uh, they had a parents race. And I was in the parents race. So I didn't know it, but he had enrolled me for the parents race. And I stood there at the starting line and banged the gun rent. Right and I was running, I was running. And I was running faster than I, I ever ran before. <laughs> and I was running towards the finish line. And I'm running. I wasn't. A, I, I don't think I was a born again believer then. I can't remember. And I was running and I was running. And I was going to beat everybody else. And I was so concentrating on beating everybody else. Before I knew where I was, I tripped. I fell on our road. <laughs> My granddaughter, she loves these stories. <laughs> and I fell. And I went rolling all over the place, and everybody else was rolling all over the place with laughter. <laughs> but I'm telling you this morning that you have no reason to give up, because the Bible says, as I said to you just now, if God is for you, who can be against you? In Jesus' name, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So pressing, keep on going this year. Don't give up. Keep on trusting God. Keep on walking. You know one thing God doesn't like? He doesn't like believers that hold his hand as they walk along the curb and then they slip and they fall into the gutter and they let go of his hand. God wants us to hold his hand in the gutter and in the good times of life. He wants us always to hold his hand and to trust him. And that is the secret. Don't think that you are clever because you are nothing without Christ Jesus. You need, if you're watching this on video today, you need Jesus in your life. And if you don't have Jesus in your life, if you're not having a relationship with Jesus, I want you at this moment in time to close your eyes, just put your hand out towards me, and just follow me in this prayer. And just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe from what the pastor says, the pastor says that you are a savior and I need a savior. I've been living life, my life my way. I've been trying to solve my problems my way and nothing has worked. So I'm turning to you, Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my heart. I believe I'm born again and I believe I have the savior in my life. I lay my life down to do it your way. Amen and amen. Praise you will live and you will not die. You will proclaim my gospel. You will not go through another day like you've been through this year. For I'm with you, my child. And your faith has great reward. Thank you. Have no fear, child. Have no fear. Speak my word. My word is a two-edged sword. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Shobabababashi shakabanda. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. My son, I'm watching over you every minute of your life. I see you coming, I see you going, I see you rising, and I see you laying down. But I'm with you all the time. Hear me when I speak. You will have great success. But hear me when I speak says the Lord, in Jesus' name. Yes, I give my life to you, Lord. I live for you, Lord. I live for you alone. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grampy calls you his little princess. But Grampy's wrong because you're my princess. I'm with you and the world will bring temptations against you. The world will try and distract you. But my princess, I have great plans for you. Great plans that no man can fulfill in your life. Only I can fulfill those plans. You're so committed to me. I feel that commitment. I hear that commitment in your prayer time. Place in you a greater spirit of boldness where you will speak up, where you will sing and shout from the mountains of my love for you, says the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord would say to you today, Joe, let go. Just let go. Just let go. Let me do it. You've done a good job so far, but I can do the best job. I can do the best job. Just let go. And let me do it. I'm also going to put in you. A bolder voice. I've seen your boldness. I've heard your boldness. But a bolder voice is coming, says the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. My daughter, you've had so many desires. You request so many things. In your heart, without even speaking to me sometimes, but I see your heart, I know your heart. But my promises are all for you. They're not for other people around you, they're for you. And as you reach out and you pluck them from my tree of life and you eat of their fruit, you will prosper in all things and you will strengthen in all things and your worry and your anxiety will become less and less as I work on your behalf, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Basil, the Lord's showing me that through your life, there's been times when it's like you've been beaten up and turned upside down, and shaken and shaken and shaken like you, could take, you couldn't take any more shaking. God says, I'm your strength and I'm your portion. I will say it again to you, my son. I am your strength and I am your portion. Keep your eyes on me. Reach out to me. Give your whole heart to me. I love you with a passion, my son. And nobody in this world will love you like I do. You are my son. And I am proud of you. Don't feel dirty. Don't feel that you're the forgotten one. Because I love you, my son. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nadine, your father-in-law sees you as your, his own daughter. He loves you with a passion, he's told me. He prays for you every day. But I want you to know, Nadine, 
that he will never love you as much as I love you. He will never give you what I can give you. He will never protect you like I can protect you. The devil tried to destroy you and you didn't even know it. He tried to destroy you and your mother. He tried to take you both out. But I saw this day and I stopped him and I prevented it. Because I am the God that loves you like no one else, says the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you to know he's going to put boldness boldness you've got boldness but he's going to put more boldness in your life you're going to go around preaching the word of God you're going to speak the oracles of God and as you lay hands on the people they will immediately recover that you will see in front of your very eyes creative miracles you will see the bones join together the, 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 the cancers drop off you will see miracle signs and wonders, says the Lord. You are my son, and I've anointed you, and I have appointed you for this day and age. So stand up and go forward, my son. Don't give up. Go forward. Go forward with my power and my strength in Jesus' mighty name. Go get the lost saved. And, and I believe what the Lord is saying, this isn't the end. It's only the beginning of the end times. For you, my son, you will go preach to the end. Uh, it's, it's the season of the end times and God's going to use you in that time to preach to the lost, the dying, to, uh, to, to raise the dead in Jesus' name. That's what the Lord said to me. We're going to be raising the dead. Dead, dead, dead. You can't get dead, but God's going to raise the dead through you in Jesus' mighty name. Your hands have been anointed anointed to, to perform miracles, signs and wonders. And when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover and they will be restored. And God's bringing, it doesn't matter what people say, God's bringing wealth into your life. So expect from Father God, the wealth of the wicked will come to you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Lord. In Jesus' name. You walk in victory. Thank you. You walk in health, wealth and prosperity. Nothing missing, nothing broken in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus name. In Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I believe that wealth is to be a blessing to others as well in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word that comes through for this church is boldness. Boldness is going to come on this church in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, also, what I really want to do is, I'm going to put my glasses on. I want to read, I, I'm going to only do it once. I'm going to read everybody's name out so that they know. And um, I just want to give you more. This is a book of prayer that Lee keeps. Thanks. And people who request us to pray for them over the time, period of time of the year. Like Pablo and Silva in Argentina, they were here the one time, and all these other people. And she prays over this book, both of us, we pray over this book daily, in Jesus' name. So I just want to, um, I, I normally before, before the end of the, the year, I go in prayer before God, and God gives me... Um, God gives me a word for the church and he gives me a, a word for, for what's coming in the, the new year. And I believe this is for the new year. And then I'm going to read the names of every person uh, that asked us to pray. put their names in this book. And if your name isn't in this book, please let us know in Jesus' name. But um, this uh, word, uh, the Lord gave me on the 12th of the 12th, 2021. 
and he said 2022 will be a double portion, a year of the double portion, a year of the Lord's favor, answered prayer, no more delays, there'll be victory, there'll be restoration, uncommon favor, the wealth of the wicked is going to be given to the righteous, signs and wonders, creative miracles, there's going to be change, the dead will be raised, divine protection, new doors opening. And these names are the families and ministries that, and leaders um, that, that, that we pray for daily. Like I say, if your name isn't in this book and uh, you would like us to pray for you daily, we, we will do it. Yes, Just send us your name. Contact. Yes. Uh, names of the families. Um, and ministers, leaders, government, um, uh, uh, the doctors and nurses, we pray for them daily as well. We pray for Betsy and family, Jean Marie and family, Vimpy, uh, Al Marie and family, Anel and family, Sue Marie, AJ, Brigitta, Bella, Jordan, Nina, Celest the Celestina, the Karaskis, the Rhodes, the um, Daniel and Abel and, uh, and Samson, Ina, Cliff, Sharon, Adrian, Irene, Chris, Anneli, the, um, Mario Cadero and family, Mark, Jane, Damien and family, Rochelle, Sean, Lorraine, Bridget, Anthony, uh, Tyler, Ruby, Marion, Paul, Angie, Harlow, Paul's family, Debbie and Ellen and boys, Carol, Anthony and family, Michelle, Vincent, Matt, Mark, Lorette and family, Lionel, Freddie and family, uh, uh, Bob and myself, Joseph, Nadine, Demi, Trenton, Lana, uh, uh, Lana and family, Richard, Lizelle, Murray and families, uh, the, the governors, Blade, Candace and Christopher, Jenny Wallach, uh, Sue Commerman, Basil and Linda and families, Skulk and Scotty, um, Milan. Oh yes, Milan. Brenda, Dixon and her families, uh, um, Ma Marius and Belinda, Marius and Belinda, Michelle, Herman and families, Ben, Bernice, Melanie, Jan, Libba, the Prince Lou families, the Beakers families. We pray for um, Israel, South Africa, uh, USA government. We pray for the police, the doctors, the nurses. We pray for Pablo Silvia from Argentina and their ministries. We pray for Jesus is Lord Ministries, Faith Broadcasting Ministries, uh, Portuguese Evangelical uh, Church. We pray for uh, Korea and Velma, Andre and Jenny, Ruth, and uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that he uh, daily loads us with his benefits that no weapon formed against any shall prosper. We cancel and destroy every plot of the enemy against us and our lives and our families' lives. The works of the evil one will be brought to naught by the blood of Jesus. And we say that this is a year of double portion in every single one of those that we pray for daily in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for healing and restoration, Father, yes. for Irene, for, uh, for um, Ina, Father, God, I just she's just on my heart this morning, Father, we pray for healing yes, for her and for Cliff, Lord, for yes. uh, Alvain and his wife, for the Fenters, Father, God. We pray for every precious person in this church, Father God, our family and loved ones, Father God, those that have come through these doors, we pray for them as well, Father amen, God, amen. we just thank you, Lord, and we destroy this assignment of the enemy against us and, and our families last in Jesus' name, but will come to naught in Jesus' name, but this is a year of double portion over our families, yes. our children, our, our grandchildren, our uh, uh, families and the people that we pray for daily, uh, our church family. A double portion of the Lord's Lord. best on our lives in Thank Jesus' Lord. mighty name. Amen. Yes, they Amen. were in uh, Chris and Anneli begging the, the prayer request. The stands Father, the stands we just fields. Yes, pray, Lord, Lord for uh, anybody in our families. And if you're sitting here today or you're watching this part video and you've got family members that are unsaved, then just intercede for them at this moment. Father, we pray for all our unsaved loved ones. That's right. We pray, Lord, the blind scales be removed from their eyes. Yes. That workers of the gospel will cross right. that part Amen. of the vineyard Amen. or Amen. the harvest Amen. field, I should Amen. say. Father, and would we'll share the gospel of grace, the gospel of Jesus Christ with them, Lord. And they would be convicted. They would be convicted of the need for salvation, Lord. And they will receive Jesus into their hearts. 
in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Lord. It's good measure, pressed down, shaken yes, together, Lord. running over, shall men pour back into our bosom. Father, we are tithers and we are givers. And Father, amen, your amen. word says we can expect a hundredfold return. And that's thank why you, we, Lord. well, not why we give, because we give because of the word says yes. we should do it. Father, we just we thank you for that right now. Lord. Yes, Lord, we give because we love you. And we always try and give of our very best to you, Father, amen, in Jesus' amen. mighty name. Amen. amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So expect this here. God's going to come through for you in every area of your lives. Yes. Whatever you've asked him, wait on him, and he's going to surprise you with his goodness yes. in Jesus' Thank mighty you, name. Amen, Thank amen, you, Lord. amen. Praise God. So you will, God. we decree and declare, you will walk in health, wealth and prosperity, prosperity nothing missing nothing name. broken in jesus mighty name amen. trust the lord and see what he's going to do amen. in your lives in amen. jesus mighty name so amen. we started amen. off this way 2022 as a way to keep on going pressing amen 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 amen. So amen until the next time amen. god bless you that the Lord bless and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, turn his countenance towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name, be blessed and have a wonderful week. And the month of January is going to be a good month for you. Don't look at all the negatives. Look at the positives and look to the shepherd, the hand of the Lord. He will provide for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.